So, good morning. The purpose of this little walkthrough is kind of highlight sonar and the different functionalities that you can do within it um, and what sonar is and all that jazz. So, sonar um, allows you to pretty much pull in metadata from a Salesforce org and easily navigate through it, see any relations that might be tied in with it, um, and all those different things. So, what you see here is the dashboard. Um, so right now their dashboard is a little generic. Um, it's not customizable. They will be work, they're working on a customizable dashboard. Um, that's a customizable dashboard um, that should be coming out in the near future. Um, but up front, you get to see how many fields there are, workflow rules, validation rules, flows, uh, which includes process builders and code, um, entities, API calls, so on and so forth. Um, and it also shows you kind of a summary of when the last run was. So for since I connected their org yesterday, it didn't run this morning, but if I look at someone like um, it shows again that it ran yesterday um, at 644. So it runs, I think, every other day in terms of the updates, um, just to kind of show that. And you can also see like what new, how many fields were added any new entities and those things that um, if you're continually doing work, you'd be able to see that. So with that, I'm going to stick with or because there is a couple of things, there are a couple of things that I need to do. So I figured I'd take advantage um, of this call to kind of walk through those things. Um, underneath the dashboard area are the tags. So um, right now I just have one tag set up for scribe, um, but you can create any tags that you want. So if you wanted something for strictly, um, let's say, opportunity management, you can create that and choose the color you want. There's also a field limitations or um, not field, lim yeah, field limitation in terms of how many characters. So just keep that in mind. And then who you want your owners to be. So if this means if there's anything done to things tagged with scribe or opportunity management, I would get a notification that something was done to that. Either it be the field was length increased in length or added to a process builder or removed from a process builder or that process builder was changed, all those different things. Um, let's create a tag as well, description. That's pretty much how you can create tags. Um, and then you can go through and associate fields or anything with that, uh, with those tags. Um, so that's pretty much the main two things on the side. Sync um, pretty much just says when you want to resync it. Um, you can also see a log of what succeeded and what maybe failed, if there are any. And then settings is pretty much a straightforward. Just, do you want notifications or not? Change your password, general information. Um, that's pretty much it on this little sidebar. So with that, um, the main piece that you'll probably be using within Sonar um, is the quick find box. So you can search for anything like opportunity. You see the objects um, related to that along with the process, many other things. Um, but for this call, we're just going to go to contact. <laughs> so here you can see when I click that contact object, you'll see related objects, automation, and the option to bulk tag. Um, but you'll also see all the fields that fall under the contact. Um, and I can also choose to see the API name versus the label if I wanted to. I go to the automation area, you will be able to see the process, anything that's related to this. So you can see like process builders that um, touch the contact object and all those different things. So if I wanted to, I could click this process builder, be able to see um, the different fields that are being impacted by this process builder. Or if I wanted to, I can just see the different nodes within that process builder as well. 
And the good thing about sonar is that you can kind of navigate however you see fit. So if I wanted to go back um, to fields instead, and I choose this field right here, I would be able to see everything that's connected to um, in terms of any automations or formula fields or anything like that up here. And so right now it's only this process builder. And you can see which ones are active, which ones are inactive as well. <clears throat> any questions so far? Nope. So this is really helpful, of course, because like if you're trying to troubleshoot something or figure out where dependencies might lay, then you can easily see these. Um, bigger orgs like and we are able to see any apex that's involved in or other automations that are included with that that we may not have initially built. Um, so again, when you're trying to get a gut check on the current state of an org, it's very beneficial. One thing that is also useful is the bulk tag. Um, so you can add in a list of fields um, here. So you can do that either by kind of showing all the API names and highlighting every single field and copying and pasting that into like a Google sheet and then removing the preceding object dot and keeping the name and then putting those fields in here. Or if you have a mapping document like this one for that I have for with respect to the integration, um, you could just kind of go to the object that you're doing a bulk tag for. And just do a copy, paste. Um, you can do it and then check fields. So since I have some not 100% map accuracy, so like for this it would be his first name, last name. I need to clean change that to account ID. This is other or mobile. So I can remove certain things and just check the fields until it says it's all good. Um, in which then I can choose scribe and click bulk tag. And it'll give me a little hip hip hooray message. And if I hop back over here, um, you can see like UID is already now tagged. Count ID, um, I can search for first, all those different things. If I wanted to, I can then also fix the one that I couldn't tag, which is the mobile, and just go in here and select that. So, this helps with organization, also lets you kind of manage um, different dependencies. So if I were to show like org, um, and go back to the dashboard or tags, you can see like we have multiple, right? Propel, mountain point created, anything that's obsolete, anything relative to a sent financial force. Um, so I'll just go use, look at Propel. I can look at what's related to the propel tag, right? So any fields, flows, process builders that are utilizing propel data um, for other pieces, it helps kind of stay focused on any discussions or if you're talking to the customer and they're having questions about, well, this isn't working, you can easily filter to what that might be um, and further dig into it. But we pretty much asked the customers that are currently connected if they're okay with us linking that, uh, but it's as easy as linking the new Salesforce organization and using credentials um, to do that. So questions, comments, concerns, thoughts? So this only kind of pulls changes to metadata, right? Not actual um, data, is that correct? Correct, no actual like data from records, just the metadata that would be pulled over from production environment to a dev environment. Okay. What about like installed packages that we don't really have in Intel to, does it also kind of scan that? <laughs> so like all, so right now for we have three item objects. So it gets a little fun like that. Um, 
but you can you will be able to see like this is I think part of assistant. Um, if I go to the next one, this is another ascent piece. And then the final one, PLM is propel. So like I can see all those things, all the related objects. Um, so you know, in Tony's world of rootstock, he would be able to see anything that's related to this straight from that one object. Um, and then I could look at, you know, okay, well, what about the product? And then let's continue down the rabbit hole of related objects and different things. And you can see the information. So um, like for product, item dot product is a lookup of the product object. And then for asset, it says, lists the different relationships that you have for that. So you can kind of see the different relationships that you have um, without maybe having to go through a, the schema builder and try and follow all those um, mappings that are laid out there. Did that answer your question? Yeah, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. What else? Hey Billy, appreciate you walking us through this. Is, did we um, did we get a sandbox connected to? I have not connected one yet. Gotcha, but it's like the the same process basically. Yeah, Alex provided the steps for it, so I just need to do that and share that out. Um, make sure there's no issues. There's there's like endless possibilities with how you can look at different things, but uh, I think one of the very cool value adds that this can help is um, more complicated change procedures that need um, you know incorporated into basically the the promotion process. Maybe you could uh, like walk us through an example, sort of how we could use it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like you could assess the impact on a change or maybe in helping building a change set or something. So Sonar is not meant to build change sets. It's really to see if I change this, what is it touched to that it might impact. So again, if I go to fields and I say, um, good one is the classification for with I wanted to see any relations that this might have. These are the pickless values or anything like that. What is the long-term impact with respect to that functionality? Um, or if I change this product creator flow, um, right? What what is it related to? So I can see all the different fields or nodes. Um, in terms of creating a product, get the revision for this, get the item, all these things and how, what's currently being used. So if I'm changing this flow, what, what are the relationships in those things? Um, that's more of what Sonar is meant to be. You can't build change sets with it. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And that's what I'm talking about, like doing your, we need to change this flow because of this reason, but just making sure we don't have an unintended impact somewhere else. To me, that's definitely, it seems like a valuable way to use this for, for that use case. So the two use cases that I thought would be the most valuable and feel free to correct me if of speaking out of line of the capabilities of it. But when you talk about like, we've had problems with their integration failing for various reasons. Um, so when you go through and tag the objects that are syncing between NetSuite and their internal admin makes a change, then we have a faster way of uncovering, oh, this change happened to the metadata, this field got deleted that is required as a part of integration or whatever. So for mm -hmm. troubleshooting and getting notifications of changes that have impacts, I think is a value add. Uh, the other thing is this month or early next month, they're going to have um, a new capability within Sonar to export out documentation. So 
think about building out the complexities of a, an org and all the custom fields, process builders, all that stuff that gets um, added as a part of the, the build stage. I think another value add is going to be able to export out from here. Here's all the customizations that Mountain Point did to your org. Right. And right now, I don't think that's an option, but like you said, it's supposed to be coming out in the near future um, in terms of that kind of overview PDF that you can get. So those were the two um, primary use cases that I thought the team would get value out of. And then the third one is a new org or a new customer rather that has an existing org that is several years old that other consultants or the company have um, have built out things. And I think this would give us a, a faster lay of the land of, of what's in there and the impacts. So as an example that you've got connected in there that has a bunch of legacy technical debt that should allow us to know the impacts of what we plan to do for them from a, a rebaselining re um, sales cloud. Right. And that's one thing to keep in mind um, is if the customer renamed an object in their org, that's what it'll show up here. So um, for example, can rename their account object to company uh, I think renamed it to quote or something like that. So if you're searching for a specific object and you can't find it because you're searching account and that's what you're hoping for, um, it's whatever it's labeled as in their org. Um, that's one thing that, that's a gotcha that I've experienced when using Sonar. Yeah, that's the crash course of Sonar. Um, any other questions? Cool.